In this week's episode, I'm talking to Anna Gulopchenko from Tax File Estonia about how she got started in sourcing, sourcing in Africa, and how she keeps winning hackathons. Welcome to episode 34 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. At the end of this interview, Anna talks about a hackathon that she'll be hosting together with her colleague, an amazing hiring. If you're free this Thursday, the 13th of December at 3 p.m. CET, Central European Time, we would love to see you there. You can sign up at social.sourcingchallenge.com slash hackathon. I started off the interview by asking Anna how she got started in sourcing. Uh, it was accident, uh, but when I was like thinking how it all happened, I realized that I've been into technical recruitment before even I knew what is a technical recruitment. Uh, this, the long story, start, long story short, that uh, when I was in uni on the first year or so, I had like this uh, software engineering course, like informatics and stuff like that, and I was definitely not the best there. And uh, at that point, I had to finish some labs and uh, write some programs, and I didn't. I realized that <laughs> it's not going to happen. So I find the person who wrote me on the that's my friend who wrote me on the le- on a piece of shit the uh, um, the task and this program. I typed. I. Mm, change uh, some code. Now I understand that was debugging. <laughs> but at that point, I just like transfer it into the computer, program worked, I get my uh, my score and everything was all right, passed the exam. <laughs> but now I realize that that was the first person ever hired to do some software job for me. And yeah, that was a sign. Uh, but to be serious, yeah, it was an accident. I actually have an engineering degree and I had no intention to work with uh, recruitment, but by accident, I ran into my previous job that relocated me, and I decided that that's the guy I want to work with and give it a try. And um, here we go, here I am, basically. <laughs> you're doing a lot of recruiting, uh, well, your company is doing a lot of recruiting in Africa and yeah. basically everywhere in the world. Tell me a bit about that, because I, I think. I know of, I know people recruiting in Africa who are in Africa, but actually recruiting in Africa for from Europe, I haven't seen a lot of people doing that. Uh, at some point, the company made a decision to to try African market, and it's uh, been small startup from small uh, country, uh, no budget, no funding. At that point. Uh, it was the, the best choice to recruit person from here because there wasn't no money to fly, to hire the agency, to do anything, to find the people there. So at that point, the guys, uh, the founders, the managers, they took a shot to hire someone over the Skype. And that's uh, how it's all continued. And it actually aligns with this kind of uh, market strategy that Taxify has. Uh, we prefer uh, not to go to the market and present the product and launch the product by ourselves, rather to find the people who can adjust this launch, adjust the product, and be as much as local uh, to the market and do this job. And uh, that would give us success. This is the focus to adapt uh, markets and the teams uh, to what the, what is going on there. Uh, so that's why, yeah, that's why it's all Skype, it's all from Europe, and um, it was like business decision to uh, find the people who can launch the product rather than launch the product by ourselves, and later find, them, find the people who will support them. And a lot of companies does these mistakes by launching themselves and later trust others, and those others usually fail, and we don't want, <laughs> didn't want and don't want it now uh, as well to have this kind of strategy. So from a sourcing point of view, like, how did you get started with, with the, an African market? Like, where do you look? Like, how do you know, you know, where to look and who to talk to and, you know, what, how, where to kind of find information? Like, how did you go about that? Uh, we have this kind of um, unified profile, the, the people that we want, and usually that's the same, um, the same skills and the same background uh, for every company. It doesn't matter is it Paris, Sydney, or Nairobi. That's all the same people with the same job and the same stuff that they have to do. And uh, according to that, uh, we research the market. So, uh, for example, consultancy background, uh, surprisingly, 
it's not only Paris or Sydney or London, it's also Nairobi, it's also Dar es Salaam. There is such the same companies, they exist there, they have worked with the markets and people who are working there, they understand that. And again, surprisingly, there is an amount of startups that we researched uh, that are launching in Africa, that are also working exclusively with this market and they are see potential and they see the challenges and people who work there usually understand what's going on. And that was the first uh, step. Sometimes it uh, doesn't go down to the, to the sourcing. Um, again, it's, um, it's Africa, it's uh, Latin America, Eastern Europe, uh, quite high level of unemployment on some markets. Uh, people are willing, uh, looking for the job, and they are willing to change it more proactively than any kind of <laughs> other other locations. So sometimes it's just like a bit more patience and no source at all. But sometimes you have to uh, firstly research what market can offer you, and surprisingly, African market can you know, offer you the same startup guys, founders. It could offer you a consultancy people. They're all there. The question is where to find them. And here, like the first and the simplest uh, stuff to do is LinkedIn. Um, despite being popular in like in Western world, uh, it's a very limited amount of the people who are there. But who are the, the ones who are there and they're taking care of their LinkedIn profiles, they update something, they share something. That's the guys potentially you can hire. And there is like <laughs> no magic to, to do, uh, to uh, not to run some complicated searches and so on. Uh, they are there. Just find the companies, find the sources, universities, uh, any kind of experience that you need and uh, move, uh, move along. And patience. <laughs> Sometimes it's just <laughs> up to patience. <laughs> That oh, makes sense. When, when, when you started in, in sourcing, Anna, like, who did you go to to learn? Like, where did you did? What, like, what did you read? How did you kind of get from having an engineering background to getting into recruiting and then kind of learning what sourcing is? Like, who did you look to? Uh, at that point, I just like learning by doing. Uh, I'm very thankful for my first CEO, Andrei Stetsenko. Uh, the founder of Relocate Me. Uh, he was <laughs> the, the person who teach and show what to follow. And at some point, I remember he went to the sourcing summit and it was like maybe my first half a year that I've worked in recruitment and sourcing. Uh, he comes to, uh, he, he went to sourcing summit and he comes back. I was like super excited. Guys, there is a sourcing. We have to do it. <laughs> we have to do it. And uh, he kind of introduced being like the this uh, middleman between all of them, like Irina um, and, and other guys, Glenn and so on. He was like the middleman <laughs> uh, to translate it to the reality in which we were. And he was the, the, the person who introduced all of this great uh, sourcing name to us. And it was, yeah, the pure experimentation. It was like, okay, there's a GitHub. What can we do with GitHub? How we can go there? Oh, there is something else. Let's try it and, and so on and so on. So basically, it wasn't like the big book or some someone's blog that teaches me how to source. It was like pure enthusiasm, pure listening. Oh, we got the sourcing. We have to do it right now. Let's let's give it a try. Uh, that's what kind of teaches me. Um, I still have like huge um, kind of um, it's called mind map. Uh, there's a lot of tools, a lot of uh, sources that I can do for different jobs. Uh, some of them I guess. Oh, Sometimes dies, something changed, and uh, the tool doesn't work anymore. Uh, the source is limited; they close like accesses and so on. Some are popping up. <laughs> this uh, mind map keeps growing and multiplying different directions. What can be done uh, differently? So yeah, there wasn't like big names or someone who I followed, but it was uh, learning by doing this pure like, experimentation approach. And in terms of like tools, do you have any? Go to tools that you use to that you use every day, or or is it all like you said? Like it kind of depends on what the search is, and you you have different things. Yeah, uh, there is some some things that uh, I use every day. Uh, 
I'm not only doing like Africa and Europe in terms of operations, marketing and so on. I also, the, the huge part of my job is engineering hiring. And uh, for engineering, there's <laughs> one big love that love calls, calls amazing hiring. I love that too. Um, the, the thing that it's, uh, it helped me not to research other lots of tools to find emails or match the profiles and so on and so on. It has all, all in one and it's, uh, it gives me that value to, to have more time, to give an opportunity to be more personalized because it has all of the profiles and gives you almost complete, complete picture of the person and so on. That's my like one number one tool. A um, bit more on uh, what I use. I also love like email campaigns and stuff like that. And I like uh, the, the thing called reply.io, I guess. Uh, that's uh, automation for emails. Uh, very friendly user experience, nice reports of what's, what happens to, to the, uh, your campaign, what happens in general, uh, with replies and some machine learning that was important and stuff like that. Uh, really nice, I highly recommend. It's not like uh, for those who are sending thousands of emails, it's for those who are preferring to send like maybe 100. Um, nice personalization, certain level, not going all creep, uh, but still, uh, <laughs> uh, still quite nice, and uh, I love it as well. Uh, that's maybe like the most par powerful for me right now stuff that I do. And again, it really depends. If it's Africa, simple, simple LinkedIn, and it works. The, the, the question is what to look there, and that's it. So no, no extreme stuff there. You've done well in a number of hackathons. Like I know you won one of the amazing hiring hackathons. You just won the, the hackathon at Sosu. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your secret and how did you kind of get into, um, well, becoming really good at hackathons? I don't know. We, 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 the, the first thing that the first hackathon and the, that we tried uh, as a team, just like to have some fun and to get some free amazing hiring <laughs> subscription. So the motivation was like pure, like, uh, material, <laughs> free stuff, and uh, just just give it a shot. And uh, there is no magic. Uh, I don't think that uh, being good at hackathons makes you like super good source at the end. It's how you work with the business, how you work with your hiring managers, how you approach the people. That kind of different stuff. And uh, hackathons for me, it's like hack your run for developers or um, similar sources. If you're good in computer science, if you're good in algorithms, some data structure, so on, you can solve Hackeran that makes you a bit better developer than others. The same for um, recruitment sourcing hackathons. You know the basics. That makes you a bit stronger than uh, than others, and that's it. So for me, there is no magic. Uh, sometimes I, of course, play the sourcing game by Jan. Uh, yeah, uh, that's <laughs> that happens to me. So I. I, I'm bored, what shall I do? Oh, there is a new game, I will try it. Uh, I, could, I can st be stuck on some question, uh, forget to close the tab, then I close everything. Oh, there is a question that I didn't answer. I'll run the search one more time. Here we go, <laughs> the answer. Everything was so simple, just like, give it to you, I don't know, a week to be there and the uh, answer will come. Uh, so yeah, um, no specifics in that term. I'm trying. I'm trying to be very humble about the hackathons and stuff. Again, it's like hack rank for developers. It mm -hmm. uh, makes you better, but doesn't guarantee that you're exciting at this point. And talking about like your own kind of country and and you, yeah, obviously hiring a lot of developers. What if if somebody from America or or you know the rest of Europe so like okay we we have to open an office there or they have an office there and they they're telling them we need we need to hire a lot more people. Where do they start? Like you know, what's is there anything specific that you have to do or like what's what's the difference? In Estonia, I guess you just to have to be great and have a great product. That's uh, that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so nothing, nothing big. Nothing, nothing special. Yeah, uh, Estonia is a small country and uh, it has uh, small markets and it's like a community base. Everyone knows everyone, and uh, if you, if the guy knows the guy, and it's, if you screwed up, you screwed up. Totally, <laughs> mind it in, in, in your mind, and uh, yeah. Speaking about Estonia, 
get a great product because there is a number of startups, there is a number of bigger companies, unicorns, uh, and so on. It's really hard to compete. And my first advice for such guys uh, will be don't count on local people bring uh, foreigners to Estonia uh, because Estonia is like super expat uh, friendly uh, it has government program it's called uh, work in Estonia and those guys are doing some crazy <laughs> crazy shit to be honest even this week uh, they brought uh, 12, uh, 12 developers um, to to show them Estonia, to show them the companies, to invite the, those people to have interviews in different companies, and those companies will do the offers. It is like completely free, so just free trip to Estonia. <laughs> Why shouldn't? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, super supportive country and uh, super supportive law. How to come here? And yeah, my first advice: don't count on the local market. It's really small. It's super competitive. Uh, it's still not the, the highest in terms of salaries, and you can yeah, save some stuff. Uh, but um, don't don't count on that unless you have. The greatest product ever. <laughs> well, yeah, and you have really good IT infrastructure. So, in terms of actually, you know, having really fast broadband internet and and just the ease of setting up companies in the in the country, yeah, that makes it easier. Anna, if uh, if people want to follow you and um, and yeah, see you next time you are going to be talking, and where can they can they best find you? Uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, where to see me uh, on the thirteenth of December. Uh, me and my colleague Mario, we are hosting the Amazing Hiring Hackathon. Mm -hmm. uh, so the questions made by Lapo is uh, from me and Mario. Uh, it should be really cool. So if you want to challenge us uh, in terms of sourcing skills and uh, solving some problems, yeah, that's a nice time to get us to know better and also solve the problems and win the prizes. I guess that's the uh, nearest one that we, uh, we will be doing. Thank you so much for having time for me. And, and um, yeah, I look forward to meeting you soon again. Yeah, me too. Thank you.